charity at the Fair Play for All Foundation. Um, we don't want to work in just one area. Sports are fantastic, um, but in the end, 5% of the kids might make it professionally and make a livelihood out of it. And so you need to integrate everything together, the sports, education, nutrition. All of these problems uh, underlie um, a, a community living in poverty. And so you have to lift all of them together in order to really break the uh, cycle of poverty. So um, a lot of our kids uh, who are sponsored in the education sponsors, they join in the sports program and that provides them an outlet for firstly the energy, but it builds a lot of confidence in them, which is great to see. Um, but the most important thing uh, with that and what explains really the holistic nature of it and why we, we work uh, in, in pretty much every area is that when you work in a community um, where poverty is such a huge issue, then uh, we have uh, kids who, they just don't dream about the future. You ask them beforehand, what do you want to do when you grow up? And they'll talk, oh, I'll be a scavenger, I'll be a truck driver in the garbage industry. I just want a, a decent home. And we're talking no bigger than this, it is the normal size of the houses there. That's the dreams because they haven't seen anything outside of that. So the first time out of Piathas, most of the kids, was visiting um, another area for a tournament or for, for a football training outside of the area. And that's where they started to integrate with the rest of the world. They started to see another world. And so over time, they started to learn to, to dream. They saw that they could challenge other kids. They could do well and they could be something there. Um, and so that, that was great to see. And now when you ask them, what do you want to do when you, you grow up? And they're like, well, I'll, I'll be a doctor. I'll be a nurse. I'll be a teacher. And now that dream is there. They, they can work towards it. And that's the first step. There's a lot of different ways that we raise money. Um, we, we get some corporate sponsorship, which is fantastic. Cordae are now come on to sponsor the Philippine Boys, which obviously we're very appreciative for. Um, with corporate sponsorship, we've got different companies sponsor different areas. And it's, it's roughly split, 50% the Philippines, 50% abroad, which we're very happy with because a lot of charities uh, rely on uh, uh, foreign donations. We're launching the Fair Play Academy. Uh, we're very excited by this because this is it's certainly going to be our biggest project. We'll buy some land in Payatas, which is land titles. Most of Payatas doesn't have land titles, so no one owns where they're living on. And that means we can train more professionally, we can train um, the age groups. I'm used to coaching 80 to 100 kids at once on a very small space just together. But the kids have fantastic potential. Uh, so football is hugely important uh, for everyone involved there, uh, and sports generally. Most of our players uh, are in the top 10, top 5 of their class with 60, 70 classmates. They've got so much potential, but at 9, 10 years old they realise they're smarter than the teachers. There's nothing else they can learn from them. And so that's what limits the potential. So every year the preschool will um, uh, effectively graduate into uh, the next year, we'll enrol the next year. So um, we'll get the elementary school and eventually high school and then sponsor the university uh, for the kids going on there. Yeah, teacher training is a huge problem. We did some interviews for our own teachers. We have two full-time teachers at the drop-in center. And just talking through with them during the interview, they couldn't tell you what any learning styles were. The simple audio, visual, kinesthetic learning, they, they didn't know any of it, and they've got an education degree. So you wonder what's being taught in, in some of the schools. So education is, is so important in that respect. At the same time, nutrition is a huge issue. Um, and so on top of this, we'll be building a, a really big urban farm. So that'll grow all the fresh vegetables, the fresh fruits, provide a market for the area in order to, to be able to sell and, and buy affordable food. So we can provide that option for families, because right now they just don't have the option to buy good, healthy food. Our goal really is to, to build this model, make it self-sustainable, so we've got our social enterprise, everything's running itself, and then we don't need so much money from outside, and then we can replicate that in other areas. The kids are fantastic. They, they, they're what keep me there, um, working, because when you work in this sector, it's, it's difficult. There's a, there's a lot of hours, there's so many things going on, and it takes a lot out of you, but it's the kids that really bring that energy back. I'm nervous, right? Uh, excited, very excited. Yeah, yeah. It's the uh, most excited I've been for a game, I think, ever. It's, uh, it's great.